On today's show, autonomous construction trucks are about to hit the road, sales of imported cars are skyrocketing in South Korea, and how you could win a makeover for your garage. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for August 25th of 2015. Most car companies say we won't see self-driving cars on the road until at least the end of the decade, but autonomous technology is already being put to use in the real world. Caterpillar and Komatsu are using it at mining sites, and now Florida is getting set to use an autonomous vehicle for road construction. Most roving maintenance crews are protected by a truck-mounted attenuator that travels behind them. Essentially, it's a truck equipped with a crash barrier. While these are great at keeping the crew safe, the driver is still at risk. That's why a company called Royal Truck and Equipment introduced an autonomous truck with an attenuator that works by following a lead vehicle. So work crews are still protected and no one is in the truck following them. The system was developed by Microsystems, which supplies the military with unmanned vehicles. The first autonomous truck mounted attenuators will be put into work in Florida by the end of the year. And speaking of autonomous vehicles, make sure you check out our coverage of the Autonomous Cars 2015 conference. John will be interviewing the experts from the floor of the show, so keep checking out Autoline.tv for the latest interviews. Well, this is the part of the job that we hate. IndyCar driver Justin Wilson died yesterday from a head injury that he sustained at the Pocono race on Sunday. Wilson was hit in the helmet by debris after then-leader Sage Karam struck the outside wall and parts flew off his car. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Wilson's family and friends. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Hyundai, learn more at Hyundai.com. And by Pure Michigan, Leading the automotive world in intelligent, connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Yesterday, we wondered what these odd-looking tailpipes are that were spotted on this camoed-out BMW in Michigan. As it turns out, they are affixed to the exhaust to help ease the testing process. The ends are called Marmon flanges, which allows two flat cylindrical faces to be locked together with a ring clamp similar to what one might find on either side of a turbocharger. This makes it easy for a test hose to be clamped and unclamped quickly and helps create a good seal. Oh, and as for that hook sticking out of the bumper, it is used as an anchor point for strapping the car down to a dyno, but is also used to tow the vehicle without damaging the bumper. And not just in the real world, automakers and suppliers use them when testing in the snow. Thanks to Wim Van Acker for sending in the pictures, and thanks to everyone that responded. I know we here at AutoLine learned a thing or two, I hope you did too. Do you own a Dodge vehicle? Could your garage use a little sprucing up? If so, then you're in luck. Dodge has partnered with Contour Cabinet and Swiss Tracks to give one lucky fan a garage makeover. Any Dodge brand owner or lessee can enter the contest by uploading a no longer than 60 second video to its Facebook page that showcases their Dodge vehicle and the garage in need of a makeover. But make sure you're creative. The entries will be judged by a panel as well as voting open to the public. The grand prize winner will receive customizable contour cabinets and Swiss Tracks flooring. The contest just started and runs through September 21st. You know, ever since South Korea entered into free trade agreements with the European Union and the United States, sales of imported vehicles have skyrocketed. To track who is growing the fastest, here's a list of the top 10 automakers selling vehicles there. While Korean automakers still dominate their home market, European and U.S. automakers are quickly gaining market share. Sales of Japanese brand cars are also growing fast. Note the strong growth by Sang Young and Samsung, two Korean brands that we usually don't hear much about. Through the first five months of the year, the total South Korean car market grew 4%, but foreign automakers grew far faster than that, except for General Motors. And matching the results we see in so many other markets, 
sales of passenger cars fell by 3.6%, while sales of SUVs and CUVs were up more than 17%. So what the heck is straight line racing? We'll have the answer right after this. Did you have a good nap? The Firestone Destination LE2. <laughs> Tough enough to handle anything the road throws at you. Oops. And you throw at it. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. We here at Autoline consider ourselves to be pretty big race fans, but we certainly had never heard of straight line racing before. That all changed last Thursday when we had Van Conway of Conmar Racing and his 2,000 plus horsepower Viper in the studio. While the races range in length and how they're run, here Van describes what takes place at a few of the events and how they can differ from drag racing. It's invitation only and the format of that race is a 60 mile an hour run up and the Christmas tree is right there at the 60 mile an hour point. And if the cars are no farther than three feet apart, you'll get the green light. And then you run for 1,500 feet, so about a quarter mile. So you're not coming out of the hole like the old days, drag racing, mile and dragway, or wherever street you were on as a kid, Woodward. You're, you're 60 miles an hour, and if, if you get the green light, then you go. And so you run 1,500 feet. And that's their format. When we raced in Chicago at the Chicago Go Fast at the airport, when that car beat all the cars, uh, that was from... That was from, a, they call it from a dig, from the hole, but it's on the airport, it's on an airport strip. So we run a half a mile there and you go right through the trap speed and then they flash the speed up. And, um, and, and so now what happens with Texas Invitational is you have, you have seatings on, on Friday. So depending upon what you run, you'll have your seatings and then Saturday you'll run. And then Sunday is the rear wheel drive. The end goal of these races are to get crowned the fastest street legal car in the various lengths. But if you'd like to learn more about the sport, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or check it out on our YouTube channel. That wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.